Welcome to BaconGPreps.com. I am not Wilfred Brimley. I am Evan Wren, and this is the Capital Farm Credit Wednesday Night Podcast. I'm here with my partner, Dan Youngblood, via Zoom. And tonight, Dan, we've got a special guest, head football coach of the surging Roscoe Plowboys, Jake Freeman, is with us. Yeah, and this is going to be an exciting uh, conversation, I think. Uh, uh, coach Freeman's a guy who uh, coached the Plowboys through a, a pretty tough rebuilding phase. They had a couple of years that were really lean years for that program after a couple of really good seasons where they went three rounds deep in back-to-back years. And uh, he's got them back rolling. This is a, a very good Roscoe team he's got this year. And, and the cool thing is he told me before the season that it would be. Uh, so I, I was kind of excited to see kind of if, if it would meet his expectations. And so far, I don't think so far, I don't think there's any questions uh, question that it has. So uh, very cool to see Roscoe doing what it's doing. I'm glad for Coach Freeman to be uh, to have them going like he does again. And yes. uh, it's gonna be fun talking to him about the, this this season and what he likes about this team. And he I mean, he showed some real guts just uh, sticking with it and, and being patient and. I mean, that's that's hard to go through, you know, mm-hmm. when you're you're bringing up a young program, but he he's stuck it out, and here they are. It's nice to see a resurgent program out in Roscoe. It's nice to see, definitely. And and here's some, something I think a lot of fans don't understand uh, is that if you coach high school football long enough in one place, it's not if that's going to happen, it's when that's going to happen. I mean, you, eventually you are going to have a class or a couple of classes come through that either don't have as many boys or or don't have as much talent. And, and you're going to have to go through a, a rebuilding phase. It just happens. I mean, if, if, if Hugh Sandifer who built that Wiley program and won almost 300 games in his career can have a winless season, it can happen to anybody. And, uh, and I think you're right. I, I always have a lot of respect and appreciation for those coaches who will uh, stick around through those periods. And I really enjoy uh, when they do come out the other side of it uh, with some success, because these guys didn't forget how to coach. These are good football coaches. Yes. You just don't have as much talent and yes. give them talent and, and, and watch them. They're going to win. And, and the thing is that these guys know, these guys know those lean years are coming. Mm-hmm. And, if they, you know, and, and Roscoe had some good years. They were in the playoffs and coach Freeman was right there with them. And he knew the lean years were coming and he stuck it out. And you have to respect a guy that will do that. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if you look at it, I mean, they went to the, the third round, those those back to back years. Th- that was probably the best period they've had since Wes Williams was there. They, they were they had some really good teams. And, and like you said, he knew that, you know, you graduate some really good players. You're going to have some tough years. Uh, yeah. and, and he coached them through it. And, and the, the cool thing, too, is that some of the, the uh, they are a young team. They don't have a whole lot of, uh, of, of seniors and juniors that kind of play through there, but they have some. And it's neat to see those kids uh, and one in particular, Antonio Aguayo who was one of those seniors who was a leader for those teams, for the losing teams. And now he's still a leader for a winning team. It's really cool when you get to see a kid like that, who you, who's done things the right way, uh, get to experience the success and the fruits of his labors too. So this is, this is a cool uh, turnaround in Roscoe. I, I've really enjoyed watching it happen. Before we jump into tonight's show, we need to thank our primary sponsor, Capital Farm Credit, with offices all over Texas, including Stanford and Abilene. By your own slice of Texas with Capital Farm Credit together, we're better. And before we bring on coach, Dan, we want to, we had a, a, a lean week. This is the midweek. Uh, and it's sort of like a, almost like an off week for everybody. There's a lot less work for us to do. And then a lot of the teams are taking a, uh, a day off, but we did have some ball games to, to talk about. And you were out there at Abilene uh, facing Midland legacy. And I'm telling you right now, the Eagles dang near pulled that one off. Yeah, definitely. I've got to say for a half, that is about as well and as well executed a game plan as I think I've seen in a very long time. Uh, Midland Legacy has a ton of offensive talent. It is an extremely explosive offense uh, and, and it's and it's really balanced, too. So there's nothing you can try to shut down that you can't you can pick your poison, basically. And Abilene High kind of went into it saying, hey, we need to possess the football. We need to run the football. We need to move the football, move the chains and just keep things going. And they did that so remarkably well. Uh, got out to a 20 to 13 lead at half, extend, expanded, expanded that to 27 to 13 early in the third quarter and really was doing everything it could possibly do to uh, to move the football itself and then kind of just limit the possessions for, for legacy. But eventually it just happened to where they stopped finishing their drives and legacy kind of did what they did. You, you, you can only hold down an offense that's that explosive for so long. And eventually legacy and particularly their running back, Mikhailan Young, who is just an outstanding back kind of got going and got rolling and it was hard to stop. But I've got to say that the, the effort uh, that they put in was tremendous. The, they played a great game. That's a really good legacy team. And I think for, for most of that game, Abilene High absolutely showed they belong on the field with that type of team. So that, that's one thing that Coach Fullen said after the game. And he said, this, this was a uh, playoff type atmosphere and we're a playoff team. And I have to 100% agree. 
that that game for for most of it could have gone either way. So I think that was a really big uh, game for Abilene High, even even in a losing outcome. That they gained a lot of that and a lot of, a lot of confidence. Uh, so yeah, that uh, an outstanding football game and I think an outstanding performance by Abilene High and, and Coach Fullen's bunch. I went out to Big Spring for the Big Country Preps game of the week. Uh, they took on Littlefield, uh, winning that one 47 to 29. And actually, it was a, a fairly good ball game. Uh, Littlefield uh, really wouldn't go away. That was a, a determined outfit. That's uh, a fun team to watch. They combine a, a, a spread offense with a 10 1 defense. So it's yeah. kind of, it's you're not going to have a boring game when you watch Littlefield. Let me put it that way. But it did give me the opportunity to see. Uh, Gabrielle Baeza and that receiving crew from Big Spring firsthand. And I can tell you right now, Dan, they are for, I mean, they're for real. Gabrielle Baeza is a heck of an athlete. Uh, not he's, I mean, he can throw the football really well and he's got great receivers around him. But uh, you're talking about a kid that is very big, very strong, tough to bring down. He'd be a good tight end. He'd be a good running back. Uh, he's a stud. Yeah. And I mentioned this on a text uh, exchange we had. He reminds me uh, uh, quite a bit of, of Abel Ramirez at Abilene High. They're both big, well put together kids who can run, who can throw, and are just tough. They're just kind of gritty players. But yeah, the, the thing that's impressed me about Baeza really throughout his career, he, he's kind of uh, progressed to get to this point, is that is that he has basically been their running game the last two years. They they don't do a whole lot of running game with their running backs. They do they do a lot of passing to the running backs, but they don't do a whole lot of uh, like traditional run game. He kind of is that running game. So he's he 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 really bears a huge burden of that offense. I mean, he, he's a huge part of that offense and he just continues to get better, continues to improve and continues to put up really impressive numbers. And I think that the thing that's been really impressive this year is that he's always been a playmaker. He's always been a guy that you could look at and say, Hey, this guy's going to be really good. But uh, the one thing he's done this year is kind of eliminate the mistakes that he made in, in past years, especially in terms of interceptions. He's really reduced that number dramatically. And, and you're seeing a difference in that team's production. They, 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 that's a good football team. So it's been fun to see them improve the way they have as well. Yeah, well, he's got a number of good receivers too. Uh, uh, Mitchell, Kobos, yes. Ford, Pfizer, uh, Manning, all these guys can catch the ball. And when you're when he's keeping you honest in the running game, that's really tough to defend. It's kind of like pick your poison because uh, I mean they're going to move the football and they're going to score regardless. Yeah, and, and I did my my preseason feature on that receiving core. They've got a lot of receivers and a lot of yeah. kids that have they've done a lot of special things for them over the past several years. But yeah, Kagan Mitchell's uh, one of those that that I mean that dude can go. I mean he he can he's he's a really good athlete. He's got good hands. Uh, he's been a very reliable target for them, but they, he's one of several. Like you said, Kobos has, has been one of those types of guys too, and uh, so in in yeah, Yana and some of those others. But yeah, it's a a very good receiving core, a very uh, good offense, and and I think we've seen that Big Spring defense improve some this year as well. So I, I like this Big Spring team. The, the question is, uh, how are they going to fare in a district that also includes? Andrews, which has been a very strong program traditionally, and then Fort Stockton, which this year may be one of the best teams they've had in a very long time. That is a very, a very tough Fort Stockton team. So I'm excited to see how the how Big Spring handles that district race. But I like the team they're putting on the field. I think this is a, this is a really quality team. Another ball game we need to talk about. We we'd be insane not to mention it. Is this ball game that occurred in the Mustang Bowl in Sweetwater? Sweetwater over Eastland, seventy to fifty four, in a game that was just insane. Yeah, crazy. Uh, just insane. There's the, the the different things that you can throw out about this ball game. We'll start with the total yardage. Well over 1,200 total yards for both uh, combined total yards for both teams. About 1,277 total yards combined. Uh, there was more than 100 points scored combined in the first three quarters yeah. of this game. And it's uh, 11 different Eastland players caught a pass. And I'll let you take it from here because I mean the stats. Uh, Go ahead, throw out some more. Yeah, because it, just, it doesn't end there. Yeah. No, it's it's just crazy. Look, looking at the scoring summer of that game will, will give you a headache. There's so, <laughs> there's so many points scored in that game. It's crazy. But uh, you mentioned the Eastland kids, and, and Eastland played a, a really good offensive football game, and and just unfortunately ran into a, a Sweetwater offense that was clicking at a level that is you very rarely see at the high school level or at any level, honestly. Oh, where Leo God. Halsey completed 18 of 20 passes, 90% of his passes for 434 yards, six touchdowns, no interceptions. And then on top of that, he also ran for 90 yards and three touchdowns. So uh, uh, he has six man stats. And six yeah. man stats. He accounted for yeah. nine touchdowns. Yeah. And then you had a, a, on the receiving end for Sweetwater, Harrison Foster had a huge game, six catches, 155 yards, two touchdowns. And then uh, Ethan Brockman had five catches for 105 and two scores. So, a very big offensive game, obviously, for Sweetwater. And then Eastland's stats were interesting, too, because they obviously played the, the, the two-quarterback deal. 
And you yeah. mentioned how many receivers were involved. They, they That was a really efficient offensive performance for them as well. They just ran sure. into an offense that, that was a little bit more efficient. Yeah, Keaton Hicks and Cooper Wright basically just split that game right down the middle, and their stats are, are fairly close. Hicks threw for uh, 160 yards and three scores, right through for 186 yards on a score. Uh, they got two fairly good quarterbacks mm-hmm. over there. Yeah. Yeah, they do. And I'm, I'm eager to see how Eastland does once they get in the district, because this this Eastland team, which lost some really key players from from their past couple of teams, obviously, Baron Morton being a big part of that. But uh, but they've several others as well. They played such a difficult non-district schedule. So their record really doesn't mean a whole lot. And I think they showed in several of these games, this one included that they they've got some talent. I'm excited to see what they can do once they get to district where, where I think basically every game they're going to play in league play is winnable in my opinion. So I'm, I'm eager to see kind of how they handle that. I think they could uh, see that win total rise pretty rapidly and it'll be interesting to see if they can challenge, you know, Dublin, Millsap, uh, Jacksboro, maybe there at the top of the district. Wiley and Cooper both took the week off uh, for their bye weeks And as you see it, how do they benefit from that? I think it, it came at a good time for both. Uh, uh, I think for, for Wiley in particular, they've had some injuries issues. So I think it's, it's good for them to kind of uh, to, to get healed up and get ready for district. They, it was fortunate for them that they finished the non-district portion of their schedule with a really nice win over Brownwood. I think that will uh, kind of propel them into their district schedule. They do start with a, with a tough Wichita Falls rider team right off the bat, but uh, I, I expect them to, to be playing pretty well going into district play. And then uh, for Cooper, kind of the same thing. I think they've they've had they've had just a, they've been you know kind of going. Uh, they they started district early, being in an eight team district. They've already played two district games, and then experienced some it, some inconsistency issues. But I think uh, that this was kind of a good time for them to reset, focus on themselves, and kind of get ready for the the second half of the season as well. So I think it kind of was uh, was well timed for both. Got gives both a little bit of time to to rest up and prepare for the the games down the stretch that are really going to matter for them. And with that, it's just about time to bring on tonight's guest, Jake Freeman, the head football coach of the Roscoe Plowboys. But before we do that, we need to thank our sponsors. First and foremost, Capital Farm Credit, who brings you these Wednesday night podcasts throughout the school year. Also, for the love of the game, broadcasting and our old friend Terry Slavens, owner of K Lakes 93.5 FM out of Breckenridge, 97.7 FM KATX out of Eastland, Classic Country AM 1330 out of Graham, 94.7 FM. KWKQ out of Graham, KRO 1430 AM out of Breckenridge, and KWBY 98.5 FM out of Ranger. That is for the love of the game, broadcasting. Also, Rob Durham, sales consultant from Bayer, several A, Buick Cadillac up in Breckenridge. One of the nicest guys you'll ever want to meet. If you're in the market for a new vehicle or used vehicle, give him a shout at 254-559-2266. That is Rob Durham, sales consultant from Bayer, Chevrolet, Buick Cadillac in Breckenridge. Also, Phil Hill of the Abilene Realtors Group, Big supporter of local athletics. If you're in the market, give him a shout at 325-669-5153 or go to his website at philhillproperties.com. And with that, Dan, it is just about time to bring on the man, Jake Freeman of the Roscoe Plowboys. Yep. Uh, Like we said before, Coach Freeman uh, coming into this week with his team at 5-1, and playing really good football. And uh, in my opinion, uh, in a district that his team has an opportunity to to challenge for for a championship in. So it'll be fun to talk to coach about uh, the team he's got this year and kind of how he views this district race coming up. So, it'll, like I said, it should be a good conversation. And joining us now via Zoom, Roscoe head football coach Jake Freeman. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, guys. I appreciate you having me. Coach, first off, congratulations on the turnaround. Um, and we wanted to hear uh, from you what you thought the big keys were to this. I mean, the, the, I've got a fantastic kids. You know, one, one of the big keys this year has been uh, my senior leadership. You know, I, I don't have a lot of seniors, but the guys that I've had have, have really stepped up. You know, in the springtime, we had we going through the, the off season, getting the spring football. You know, we meet with them and we talk about we have something special brewing here, guys. If uh, if we can just keep it together, you know, and where where this team goes is where you take us. And I'm very very pleased with the senior leadership that we have. We still have a lot of young kids, but these guys have done a great job and and preparing these young kids and, and getting them ready to play. They hadn't won a lot of games in their career, but um, these seniors, uh, I, I can't compliment them enough on their leadership um, for these younger kids. And, and they're determined to win, and they've wanted to win for a while. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just very happy for them and what they've done for us. And coach, you, you kind of touched on this, but uh, in talking with you for the for the preview before the season, I could tell that y'all had a really high expectations for this bunch. Uh, I guess the one thing is when you've had a couple of lean years like you had, uh, just 
talk about kind of handling those expectations internally, maybe and, and kind of what were some keys in terms of just kind of building the kids confidence? Cause like you said, they hadn't experienced that level of, of success yet. Absolutely. You know, we had, we had gone through a, a couple of lean years and that's, and that's tough, you know, and uh, you know, we, we, we saw that we were going to have a chance to, to, to be pretty good. And, and, and these kids that I've had in the years past, great kids, a lot of fun to coach. And, and I've grown as a coach as well, as well as my staff. But, um, you know, these, these kids have been hungry to win. You know, these kids coming up. I've got some younger kids that won a lot in junior high and in the, into the JV area. And um, as they're coming up, they're hungry to win. They, they, they remember a lot of these kids. I say a lot. A couple of these kids were managers on those teams in 2015 and 16. And, and they saw us hoist those gold trophies. And, and, and they were hungry to get to that point. You know, I talked to them, what's your legacy going to be here at Roscoe? What are you going to be remembered for? And, uh, you know, we talk as, as, as a team and with seniors and captains along that line. And, and, and they want to be remembered as a team that brought Roscoe back, you know, to, to the big time winning ways and running, making deep runs in the playoffs. And, uh, you know, ultimately, you know, the, the start of the season, ultimate goal, you know, is win a state championship. We're going to talk about that, you know, uh, but we have t- steps to get there. And these kids talked about it, and, you know, and, and every week we go into the next game, that's the most important game of their life, you know? And so, uh, you know, we got to take it step by step and don't become complacent. Coach, you went up to post Friday night uh, to play Sedan and got hit with some weather, played, uh, I believe, one series. It's nice to get the win, but it's it's probably nicer to get the reps, isn't it? I mean, it's almost like you would you'd almost benefit more from a loss and get the reps. It is, man. That's a, it's a frustrating deal, you know, and uh, it, it was it was kind of out of our control. You know, Coach Cornelius at Sudan, he and I are good friends and. And, uh, you know, we, we, we get off the bus and we're delayed, you know, for an hour and we get it, we get in and uh, it's pouring down rain. We kick one series, I believe it takes a minute and a half or so and we score and they send us right off the field. Um, you know, it wasn't probably 10 minutes later, uh, the decision to not play that game was taken out of our hands. It wasn't a coach's decision. It was on the administrative end on the other end. And, and, and I, we couldn't control it. He couldn't control it, you know, and, uh, we go and talk to the kid. Like you said, just a second ago, I, I would love to have the reps. We need to play a football game. And, uh, you know, we're doing some great things right now, but every game we continue to improve. And uh, not only that, we need the conditioning as well. You know, you can't quite condition as, as you can as a, in a game. And uh, so we're missing out on that. There's a lot of things that we missed out on that. And um, But like I said right there, we, we can only control the things that we can control. And we're going to focus on that. And, uh, you know, coming into this this bye week right here, we're, we've got a lot of work to still do. And um, I had a coach in college, Jimmy Keeling, that always say, you know, whatever happens, use it to your advantage. And uh, that's what we're going to do and uh, make the best of this situation. You know, what's done is done. And uh, I, we're not going to dwell on that. Uh, probably football, we're looking to win district championships. So that's the next goal. And uh, one of the things that's really interesting about this team is you do have kind of a strong mix of, of youth and, and of experience. And I mean, guys at all different levels of, 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 of kind of that, just in key roles. So uh, just talk about uh, that a little bit, just kind of that, that mix of those guys where you do have some freshmen and sophomores in key situations for you that are really growing every game. They are, you know, I, I do have quite a few. So I've got one freshman starting and, and uh, I guess I got five sophomores starting on the field right now. And, you know, those sophomores were thrown in the fire last year and, and I'll just be honest, they weren't ready. They had to get in there and play, and they weren't ready. But, you know, that experience they gained has helped them to grow into better players. And like like I said just a second ago, you know, those games, they keep improving. You know, you're, this freshman is no longer a freshman anymore. He, he keeps getting better and better, and the sophomore's getting better and better. And uh, that's why these games are important. But every game, if we can keep improving that youth, you know, the mistakes they made in week one, you know, we've improved. We have a sophomore quarterback. He's getting better and better every week. We've got some sophomore linemen and skill guys better and better each week. Um, but another thing is, is um, we've got some seniors like Antonio Aguayo, Jake Gonzalez, and our off, few of our offensive linemen. My goodness, they've led the way. And, um, you know, they may not have won a lot in their career forward, but I tell you what, that they see what these young kids can do, and they see how these young kids can help them be successful. And, man, they, those, those young kids – just gravitate towards them, you know, and they, they, and, and it's nice to see the, the, those younger kids really gravitate toward those older kids. And I've got a, I've got a locker room of a, a bunch of kids that genuine, genuinely love each other. Um, you know, the coaches love the kids, the kids love the coaches. We trust in, in every, it all has to come together where it's, uh, you know, the coaches are going to believe in the kids and the kids believe in the coaches. And, and, and that thing right there, if, if you can get that going the right way, uh, great things can happen. 
You sort of answered our next question, Coach. We're going to ask you about your senior leadership, especially with Aguayo and, and Gonzalez, but maybe you could elaborate a little bit more. How big of a key to your success has that been? Oh, it's been incredible. You know, anytime we step on the field, Antonio, um, you know, he, you step on that field, he, he, a lot of times he's the fastest kid on that field, and he's got a chance to, uh, to take it to the house at any point, you know, and uh, we tell him you can just go make house calls at any time we need you, you know, and uh, a big-time playmaker. Um, the best thing about that is how, how many – his personality and, and his encouragement he has for these other kids. Uh, uh, everybody gravitates towards him, you know, and I, and I tell him you're going to have a huge impact – on the field that these kids, you know, that, that I won't have or any other coaches have because they're going to gravitate towards you. Jake Gonzalez, on the other hand, he's, he's my middle linebacker. He's, kind of, he's the quarterback of that defense, and uh, he's been a great leader on that defensive side. He's played a lot of football games, you know. As from a sophomore on, he's, he's been the starting uh, middle linebacker for us, and um, he's done a lot of great things there. Um, uh, the big thing, they're both captains on my team. Um, you know, not only leading just, just on that football team, but in the schoolhouse and, and, and away from the school. You know, they're doing a great job not letting things distract them. And uh, we talk to them a lot of times about, you know, com complacency kills success. And they'll sit there and say that complacency will kill success. We can't, we, we're proud of where we are, but we're not satisfied. And I'll sit there and say, guys, this is your last go around. You know, what are you, your legacy, what's it going to be? You know, and, um, and they want to be great. They want to be known as the, the 2021 uh, seniors that brought back, you know, this, it, it's a very proud community, very proud tradition here that gets us back where we ultimately always need to be. And uh, I was out there uh, for the preview and I got to talk to Antonio, a, a very mature kid, a, a, a really neat kid, but how rewarding has it been to see, you know, those, those older guys who, who have not gotten to experience this type of success before now having that success, getting to be part of a winning team and really, being a big time leaders in that. Oh, it's, it's super rewarding. You know, we're in this business for these kids and to see them experience that type of success with all the work that they put in and all the, all they had to come over, overcome the last couple of years. I mean, they've been so resilient and, uh, and to see those kids, I've, I've got, uh, you know, uh, um, Xavier Lopez, Britt, Britt, uh, justice, uh, um, David Diaz, these, these linemen right there, um, ha have done fantastic. And, and they've been in the trenches for those three years. Um, and uh, to see them succeed now, man, as a coach, that's the most re that's so rewarding. You know, there's a lot of things you want great things for your athletes. I mean, you, I say my kids, they are, you know, do anything in the world for them. We want to see success for them, not only just on this football field, but see them in, in the schoolhouse and and in life. You know, and so seeing that and seeing let the, having them see that success right there, man, I, I can't describe it in words. I mean, just fantastic kids, love them to death. Coach, uh, you guys know what you have coming up. You know uh, if you have lean years coming, and we see coaches all the time that will come off a successful run. They see some lean years as far as numbers or experience coming, a challenge coming, and a lot of them see the grass as being greener on the other side of the fence and they leave. Uh, you did not do that. Uh, I, I know that you knew that you had some numbers challenges coming up, and you stuck it out. You stayed at Roscoe and battled through it. Um, can you talk about your decision to stay and just and build your program back up? I can. I mean, it was, it, you know, I had opportunities to possibly, uh, you know, go other places. And, but, you know, Roscoe's home. I'm a, I'm a Roscoe boy and I want to see Roscoe be successful. And so, yeah, I, I as a coach, you, you see what you've got coming. You see what, what you have in the younger grades. And, and, um, but, you know, I'm very proud to be from Roscoe. I love Roscoe. I love the kids in Roscoe, and I wanted to see this program be successful. I've got a buddy there in Coleman that's kind of gone through the same thing uh, years before me, and 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 I leaned on him some to talk. Coach Elder talk about you know, hey, you know, had some great years, and then he had some down years, and and, and he talked about you know I could tuck tail and go somewhere else, but you know what, I'm I'm going to fight it out, and I'm I'm going to win, and that's the uh, the th the thing I thought is you know. We're going to have some, some, some very lean years, but I tell you what, I'm going to fight it out. I'm going to fight for these kids. Not only that is it made me a better coach and it made me appreciate, you know, you know, things that I've had and, and it made myself a better coach. It made my staff better coaches. Um, and we talk about the kids being resilient um, and overcoming, you know, adversity and everything. Well, that goes the same thing for us coaches. You know, it's a, it's a tough, tough profession, but the most rewarding profession in, in the world. But you know, it, we're not we're not immune to that type of uh, you know. I mean, it's tough. It is. We're not immune to anything that anybody else isn't. And uh, 
It, it did. It made me a better coach. But I'll, I'll tell you the main reason I, reason I stuck around was those kids. And I'm a Roscoe Plow boy, and I want to see things, the kids, and I want to see the school and the community be successful. And uh, so, yeah, that, that's the reason I stuck around. And, and it's a great school and great community, and my wife and kids love it here. And so, yeah, there's, there, there's the main reasons right there. Well, you're back, and not only are you back, but guess what? The Coleman Blue Cats are back, too. Exactly. Exactly. He, he does a fantastic job. You know, it's a, a lot of coaches go through this and it's honestly, all, it's very nice to be able to lean on some of them and talk to them when, when, when things get tough, you know, and I've, I've, I've got a family member in Steve Freeman who had some, some years there and had a lot of success at Brownwood, but that's one of my mentors that went through some things. And so you don't go through it alone. Y'all, y'all know that it's, it's one of those things that the good times and the bad times, you're not, you're not by yourself. And so, uh, um, we got a long ways to go, but we're heading in the right direction. And I'm, I'm actually going to change the question I had planned a little bit, uh, but it's one that I, I kind of wanted to ask you, and it, it may be a tough one, and you can decide how you want to answer it, if you want to answer it. But uh, one of the things I've saw, seen in, in, is a lot of really good coaches that, that have those types of periods. Like I, I got to see Coach Hugh Sandifer, who's one of the winningest coaches in Texas State history, uh, have a winless season. And, and one of the things that really impressed me uh, during that season and, and it impressed me with, with what you've done as well as he was every bit as invested in that winless team as he was in any of his teams that made it to, to a state championship game. What do you want or what would you like, you know, fans of those programs to know about the work these coaches are putting in and about uh, the job y'all are doing? Uh, Cause obviously y'all don't forget how to coach. You know how to coach. It's just sometimes you don't have the talent to work with, but y'all are still every bit as invested in the, those groups. Absolutely. You know, some of the best coaching jobs I thought my staff has done and, and, and well, myself as some of the, the teams that did not win as much. And, uh, you know, we, we, we invest if, as much. And, well, every year we're going to invest everything we can into those kids. And, um, you know, we, like I said, we grew, as, we grew as coaches and they grew as kids. And, and like I said, our main job is – I tell these kids all the time, you know, if the pinnacle of your life is playing high school football in Texas, which is fantastic, that is, the be- is awesome – but if the pinnacle of your life is what you achieve in high school football, then I hadn't done my job. I tell you that much. But um, you know, we want to have them to have a great experience, and, and I feel like they did. And I feel like those teams that I've had before that weren't as successful grew and and developed and had a fan, as a great experience playing high school football, even though they weren't as successful ho- hoisting gold, gold footballs. They they knew what it was like to be part of a team, work together with a team, be a leader on a team. Um, you know, and, and take some ownership. I allowed them to be empowered and, and, and do that type of thing. And, uh, you know, at, at the very end of the day, um, you know, seeing these kids be successful outside of the game of football, you know, that's my ultimate goal. I want to see good good daddies. I want to see good husbands. I want to see good citizens. And, 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 I, and I've had that when I go to a, a kid's graduation that I – that I uh, uh, that played under me and and they they got their diploma and they're moving on to a great job you know that's that's honestly better than any trophy I've ever hoisted and uh, as a coach and so you know there's a lot of things that go into it you know and while we're into this profession and um, you know that's why I say it's the most rewarding greatest profession in the world it's tough but there's great things that come from it. Coach, again, you've answered uh, one of our questions. We were going to ask you about you know when the, when when you're going through a struggle. Uh, who are the people that you lean on? Who are the, some of the people that you might call up? And we were going to ask specifically if you had called your uncle Steve, uh, you know, when, when times were uh, tough, did you, did you call him up and talk to him a little bit? I, I, I have. And you know what, this guy right here will send me text after uh, football games. And he came to one of my games a few weeks ago. Um, and, and I got to talk to him before the game and, and he'll send me text after game somewhat, somewhat lengthy that I have to have to. We're on bus rides, and if I'm driving or something, I have to wait until I can I can read them later. But yeah, I mean, obviously having that 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 type of resource and and, and Coach Freeman is a uh, is huge for me, and uh, he he's been a imp, big impact and a huge mentor on my life, as well as Wes Williams here in Roscoe. You know, uh, won tons of games. Wes Williams lives a mile from me down the road, and uh, he's another one that. Uh, that I've been able to lean on um, for advice. And so, like I told you before, you, you don't take this road alone, you know, and uh, uh, I've, I've had many people along the ways, Jimmy Keeling, a lot of people you were that Jimmy Keeling coaching tree. Let me tell you what is fantastic. And, and, and getting the text and stuff from him or Alan Wardis is, is, is fantastic. So, um, you know, yeah, they're, they're, everybody in coaching is, is, is together. It's a fraternity. Everybody, you know, is going to work together. It's going to help each other out. Um, and that, and that is, that's a fantastic thing in the coaching profession is, is, uh, you know, the relationships you build amongst other coaches and, um, 
you know, and help each other along the way with one ultimate goal in mind. And we'll, we'll close this out looking forward. Uh, you've made, uh, you know, it's no mystery that y'all y'all have made uh, a district championship y'all's goal. So uh, just want to talk to you a little bit about this district race, your thoughts on, obviously uh, you, you look at Rawls is, is still a quality team. They're playing well uh, right now. Lockney's kind of the same way. How do you kind of see this district uh, shaping up and coming? What are some, uh, some things you're looking forward to? Uh, it is, you know, we're, we're, we're got a bye week this week and we're, we're starting off district play with Rawls. Uh, pre-district favorite, um, no reason they shouldn't have been. They're a very good football team. And, um, you know, I, I going into – out of last year, you know, they, they had a lot of kids returning. And we know that's going to be, a, be a, a, a very tough game. And they're a very, very talented physical football team. And we're going into their place um, next week. You know, but we, we talk, we'll talk this week about, you know, we're all Jackrabbits, the most important game of your life, you know. Um, and in order to achieve that ultimate, that goal of the district championship, we've got to go through them. But we do respect them. We're not going to fear them. We respect them. We know what they can do. And, uh, um, you know, I told the kids earlier in the year, you know, you kind of under the radar and that's fine. I love being that, Daniel. I wish, I, I love the, I appreciate you that, that you did a great job picking us, you know, maybe as a dark horse or everything. And I hope you're right for a long time, but I really probably appreciate more anybody that picked us <laughs> fourth or something along the lines like that. Cause I wish that was the same way. You know, I, I, I told the kids, I said, you know, we, we love the fact expectation to win is where we want to be. But being a being an underdog was always a was always a driving factor, and um, you know these kids learning how to play and be successful is 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 fun, and I, and I like that. You know, you still look down the road. You got Crosbyton, who has a new coach and Coach Brewer. That's a that's a. I'll tell you what, I'm I'm a Harden Simmons guy. That's a Harden Simmons guy down that Jimmy Keelan coaching tree. He's gonna know what he's doing. He's got those 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 Chiefs uh, playing well right now. Lockney with Coach McCombs, I believe they're six and oh, seven. They're they're playing really well right now. Um, and so it's going to be a battle to the end, you know, and coach Evans there, there, there at Hamlin, you know, he inherited a, a um, I would not want to be the guy to follow Russell Lucas in, 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 uh, in, in Hamlin, but you know, that guy took on that challenge. Um, you know, there's some struggles going on right there, but I tell you what, those, those Hamlin poppers are going to play very hard. You know, you, you don't go play and win as many games as they have the last 10 or 11 years and forget how to win. There's a lot of tradition there and a lot of pride there. And so, you know, that's our last game of the year at Plowboy Field. You know, we, we've got we've got goals in mind to, you know, hopefully uh, be a district championship champion at that time. But we're going to respect everybody we're going to play. There's not a there's not an easy game you can sit there and look at and say, hey, you know, we can relax. We can become complacent because you can't and, and we won't. Um, but very good coaches in this district. Uh, respect them all. And uh, but I, I, I like the Plowboys right now and I, I like what we're doing and um let me tell you what, we're going to keep playing hard no matter what. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be keeping a close eye on you, and I'm sure we'll run into you on the road somewhere along the line this year. Can I say one more thing? Absolutely. Can I say a couple more seniors have done a great job for me? I do not want to leave them off of there. Go right Rick ahead. Kaiser has played for me a long time. He's an undersized kid. He plays on the offensive line and defensive end. Man, that kid's got a motor you, you couldn't even imagine. And I've got an Aiden Harmacilio, another senior. I want to recognize them that I haven't said their name so far. They played a lot of games for me that may not have been as successful as some and uh, uh, some years before. But let me tell you what, I, I, I don't want to, I want to really exemplify and, and focus and, and give a lot of credit where credit's due for some, those seniors that I have. Very proud of them guys. And uh, I'm just, um, I'm thrilled you had me on there this, this evening. Uh, it's, I'm, an, I'm honored to be here with you guys and, I also want to thank you for everything you do for, for athletics in the big country. You know, we're very fortunate to have you two guys in your first class and everything you do. Coach, it. very, well, it's very much appreciated. Thank you for joining us. And we will see you out there on the road sometime this season. We promise. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All righty. Appreciate and it, that coach. was Roscoe head football coach, Jake Freeman. Uh, it's, it's fun to see the plow boys back. They struggled for a, a number of years with low numbers and that's really tough. That's a tough thing to go through. Because a lot of people don't understand, yeah. you know, when you've got low numbers and low experience, it's, it's a tough thing to endure and some people just don't get it. Uh, but it, you know, so it takes a lot of guts to go ahead and, and, and fight through that. And yeah. coach Freeman did it, man. I mean, here's the thing. If, if, when you're competing with young players and undersized players, 
uh, yeah, you're, I mean, you're, you're playing the, the, the deck is stacked against you a lot of times, particularly in this area where, where there is just a commitment level at all of these schools that, that uh, all these schools want to win. And, and generally speaking, at one time or another, almost all of these schools have, have won at a high level. So uh, it's a very competitive area to begin with. And if, and if you have a talent deficit or an experience deficit, those things get exposed. And, and when they do, it can be a, a rough go. But uh, but I, I think the one thing, the, the lesson to learn here with Coach Freeman, with, with uh, Coach Elder out at Coleman and several others, is that these guys know what they're doing. Give them talent and they're going to win. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased that that is uh, played out here in Roscoe because I think you and I both expected it to. I mean, this is a guy, he, like, he's, he has proven he knows how to coach. And it's, it's fun to see this program uh, back and, and playing at a high level. And I'm, I'm excited to see where the rest of the season takes them because I think you can see this team gaining confidence by the week. And the, the neat thing about this Roscoe team too, is while they do have a couple of key seniors who, who play, you know, play big roles for them, they, they've got a lot of young kids in, in key roles too. So this could be a nice run for this Roscoe program. If they can just continue to build confidence and build on what they're doing now, uh, it, it, this, this could just be the beginning. Uh, they win that Rawls ball game. They're going to be district champs, in my opinion. I think, yeah, they I, mean, I think, will. I think they will, frankly. Yeah. I mean, I think they're, they're going to be two tough games uh, in both Rawls and Lockney, but neither one of those are unwinnable by any stretch with the way that Roscoe's playing. So, it, but I think you're right. If they can win that Rawls game, that that should be that's a the huge, big one. Yeah, a, a huge shot in the arm there. Yeah, that's on the road, Tim. So, but if they if they take care of business there, wow. Yeah, maybe a district how, title for the Plowboys. And, and how cool would it be? And this is not at all out of the realm of possibility. How cool would it be if if Roscoe enters the playoffs on a nine game winning streak, which is a, which is absolutely a possibility. That that would be pretty cool given what's happened the past couple of years. Yeah, that, that's definitely a possibility. Mm-hmm. You know, so then you hope that you don't run into one of those number four seeds, right? Yeah, but I think the way they're playing in, in, in a couple of the games we've seen so far, particularly that Cristobal game, uh, I think that shows – and the, the Rawls game will too. If you win that Rawls game, I mean, beating teams like Cristobal and Rawls, I mean, you're, you're yes. in pretty good shape going into the playoffs. Beating, beating Cristobal was significant, and you know what? They gave, Holly, they gave Holly the best game they've had this year, yeah. and that's I mean, a very good Holly team. Exactly. Clean up the turnovers in that game, and that's a really competitive game into the yes. fourth quarter. Yes, so. They were yeah. about uh, minus four in, in, in turnovers in that ball game. Yeah. So, and, and still gave Holly the best game they've had this year. But I think the one thing that's probably been most interesting for me out of this Roscoe team and probably the least talked about uh, feature is that, that is, is on the defensive side. I think we've seen some, some, some signs on the defensive side that uh, are pretty impressive. They've given up some points, but in some of these games, they've made some big time stops, made some big time plays. And uh, I think they're just continuing to gain confidence on that side as well. Well, this is that's something different from Roscoe, which typically when they're successful in the past, they've just outscored you. Yeah, you know? and they're but scoring CNA well is, too. Yeah, but yeah, they score really well. But to, to see some stout defense out of Roscoe is nice to see also. So for sure. And with that, it's just about time to wrap up the Capital Farm Credit Wednesday night podcast. But before we do that, we want to remind you that we have three different subscription packages here at BigCountryPreps.com. We've got a monthly for five bucks a month. We've got a semi-annual six-month subscription where we knock that price down to four bucks a month, and then we've got an annual. 12 month subscription where we knock that price down to three bucks a month, 36 bucks for a full year of big country high school athletic coverage. We'd also like to remind you that if you ever see a photo you like in any one of our galleries, they are available for purchase. You can purchase a digital download for $7. We also have some prints and keepsakes available as well. So make sure you check those out. Uh, As you're scrolling through the site, you'll notice that we uh, take a lot of photos from these games we're at. It's something we enjoy doing and it's something we are very proud of here at bigcountrypreps.com. All big country, all high school, all the time. Welcome home.